a special guest star with me tonight. Uh, that is my uh, good friend and my father, Carol Allison. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, we're coming, unlike uh, my usual routine, coming from New York City. I'm actually coming into the Hangout tonight from Central Texas. Uh, I get to see my family. I get to treat, drink Texas beer, and the Cowboys beat the crap out of the Giants on Wednesday night. <laughs> so it's a really, really good week for me overall. <laughs> Uh, we got a few new faces. We got a bunch of regulars. Let's run the list real quick. Tom, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Hi, guys. Hi, Carol. Welcome. Hey, Tom. Hey. hey. <laughs> Good to be here. Matthew, how are you doing? Uh, very well. Central Virginia was like 9,000 degrees today, so i uh, looking forward <laughs> to some cold beer tonight. Nice. I, I like your lower thirds out there. I've got to get it put into my uh, computer. I'll have it next Friday for sure. Yeah, absolutely. James, how are you doing? I'm doing hey, pretty good, good, sir. Oh, Jesus, there's two of us. Yeah, there's two of us. <laughs> James Card, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. good I'm the Canadian. Good. You can call me Canna James. That's what we we'll call me. Canna James. <laughs> got it. Got it. Is that like Canna Bus? Uh, <laughs> I don't have Matt's lower third, so we can't really talk about that. <laughs> All right, Jimmy Gass from the like weed. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, thanks for uh, having me on. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you who don't know, James, uh, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern, hosts the Southern Beer Review. Uh, he's the lead uh, hitter for, uh, what are we calling this, James? Beer Friday, I think it was? Yes, it is Beer Friday right here on Google+. Plus. That's right. So it's James at 7 o'clock, uh, the Beer Hangout at 10 o'clock, and then the Beer Podcast at midnight. Uh, if you wow. check my stream or James' stream, there's links to all three videos. So you have no reason not to wake up extremely hungover Saturday morning. Okay. <laughs> all right. Grant Ford, how are you doing tonight, sir? I'm all right. I'm, I'm hailing from Indiana. so. Good, good. Uh, Jill, how are you doing? Doing great. I'm on Lake Alexander, Virginia tonight. Alexander, Virginia. Uh, starting Fantastic. Last long trip. Yeah, uh, seems to East Coast seems to be representing a little bit more Midwest some, but that's East good. Side. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Carlick, how are you doing, sir? Not bad, not bad. I'm uh, hailing from Vancouver, BC, and uh, remarkably, it's sunny and not raining. Are you sure you're in Vancouver? Yeah, I know. It's it's a shocker, actually. I've, I've got a, a tan. I don't I don't know what the hell to do with it. People in Vancouver don't like get an open window or something <laughs> to get the tan. Pardon? Yeah, I love it, your tan. Well, they, they say in Vancouver you don't get a tan; it just rust, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, we've got a whole slew of different beers tonight. Uh, the theme for tonight was uh, drinker's choice. Uh, bring one of your favorite beers, a beer that, that means something to you. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but here in Central Texas, we're definitely going with Texas brews. And uh, we're leading off the night with a Shinerbach Oktoberfest. Ooh. Yeah. Shiner is the little brewery. Uh, where are they? In, uh, Shiner, Texas. In Shiner, Texas. Shiner, Texas. Shiner, Texas. Yeah. Wow, I got it. The Texas Institution. It uh, they they survived the uh, prohibition. Prohibition and, and uh, very very well thought of in Texas. They absolutely are. And um, Dad and I, we're just with this, we're finishing up a six pack of this over several days. This is a really, really, really good Oktoberfest. Um, let's see. Uh, Matt, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm actually going to go a little bit out of my comfort zone. I usually stick to wheat beers or red ales or, or stouts and porters. I've got a Heather Ale and I've got my very first, uh, uh, we're going to uh, no longer be a rye ale virgin. I'm going to have uh, a rye beer tonight. So. Wow, very good. And then very a stout good. to finish it out in case those two suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've got a safety margin there. I That's do. Good. I've got a fallback beer. Yeah. Tom, how about you? What are you drinking? Tonight I'm going to start off with a local beer from a local brewery called uh, Cricket Hill, and we're going to try their Reserve Ale. Outstanding, outstanding. James Card, Kenny James, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm drinking the, how do you say this, Traquair Wholesale. I decided to go far, far away, so I got the oldest brewery in Scotland's beer. Nice. Yeah, and I'm drinking that, and then I've got a... A uh, special one. I'm drinking the second time, so. Very cool. Uh, all right, James, show us your shirt before we before we move on. What's your shirt tonight? 
Uh, I'm wearing uh, one of my favorite shirts. My sister got it for me from Las Vegas. It says, uh, <laughs> it's not gambling if you know you're going to win. So, That's a true story. <laughs> true so, story. You know, always think you're going to win and you'll win, bro. So, Eventually. Don't bet absolutely. the farm on it. Don't bet the farm on it. Though. <laughs> yeah. James Gass, what are you drinking tonight, sir? I am. Well, we did IPAs on uh, Southern Beer Review tonight, so I'm drinking a Centennial... Uh, IPA from Founders Brewing Company. Yeah, uh, Founders, very good brewery. I have actually not had this one before yet, so uh, I'm interested to see how it's going to taste. Outstanding, outstanding. Grant? Yeah, I'm, I've got two tonight. I'm starting off with the, let's see if you can see it, too much light, Upland Ale, or uh, Wheat Ale. Oh, there we go, that's good. It's a pretty logo, I like the logo there. Yeah, it's from Bloomington, Indiana. It's uh, where IU is. And then I'm going to move on to one that they don't actually make anymore. It's Bee Creek Ale from just north of where I am right now. And I found a, a, a reserve, a place that had some reserves of it. And I thought, well, even if it's, you know, even if it's not good, at least nobody else has it. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't think we're going to have any duplicates tonight. That's yeah, for sure. I don't think so. Jill, what about you? What are you drinking? Well, I had some. Dogfish hat, but as you said last week, we should not bring anything from mainstream. So I, I went ahead and drank those already. And <laughs> <laughs> thanks for taking one for the team. We appreciate yeah. it. Uh, their namaste is very fruity, very nice. But uh, since I'm in Alexandria, Virginia, I had to bring a local one. It's a uh, Port City. It's a it's a year old brewery. So okay. drinking, it's a monumental IPA. So. That's IPAs are my favorite, so I, they have some other beers, but I chose the IPA for today. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, Sir Garlic, what are you drinking? Oh, okay. Well, I, I got an interesting story about this. I I went to to my local beer store and I said, "Hey, uh, can you recommend a very cool beer that's local?" So uh, he right. recommended these guys. They're called uh, Parallel uh, Parallel Forty Nine. Parallel Forty Nine, yeah, and. Uh, James has brought it on the show before. He told me, but uh, I've been I've been going through this all afternoon. It's wonderful stuff. So I got uh, uh, Hopperazzi, I've got Old Boy, and I've got Gypsy Tears Ruby Ale as my three beers. Uh, uh, James, you sh you showed us the the uh, Ruby Ale the other day, didn't you? Yeah, I think I showed you the yeah I showed Six you the spare. labels at least, but not on the actual mm -hmm. show though. Okay. Very cool. All right, Bob, I'm looking forward to get, hearing your review on that ruby. That sounds tasty. All right, I'll crack her open soon. All right. All right, so who's ready for a beer report? Oh, I haven't even poured one. Grant, was that one. you? All right, do it, Grant. Lead us off yeah. for the night. All right, this is the Upland Wheat Ale, and I am not impressed. I think it's been on the shelf too long. It's it, All the sediment settled in the bottom, and so now it's pretty... It doesn't taste like much either, so it tastes kind of like water with carbonation in it. So, wow. uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Any sort of like head huh? retention or lacing on there? Uh, oh, well, the no, glass? I don't have any. I mean, it's it's there's nothing there. It's wow. Yeah, whoop, I'm too close. Um, yeah, there's it's, and you can see. I don't know if you can see it. You can't even really see it, and it's yellow. It looks kind of like lemonade. I am, well, I mean, in I a wheat beer, <laughs> yeah, in a wheat beer, that would be okay as long as it's got the flavor to back it up. If there's no yeah. flavor, no, no flavor. I'm really, really counting on this one. Now, <laughs> <laughs> if all you said fail, that one's out of business, though, did you? Huh? You said that one's out of business, though, did you? Yeah, it is. So I'm, uh, yeah, you know. But if all else fails, <laughs> I did find one that they recommended. It's a pale ale. That's my normal. It's a. Uh, it's what I like usually is pale ale. It's called Gnawbone by Oak and Barrel Brewing Company. And I forgot to mention that one. And it's from Indiana too, but I'm not exactly sure where. Greenwood, so Indianapolis. Very cool. Very cool. So that's my back that's my third backup. <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully it's not a, uh, uh, a complete skunk out on you tonight. Oh I know. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, who's next into the barrel? Well, I'm still waiting for my uh, head to settle right here. Wow. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm not just that line. 
You, know, <laughs> you know, we measure head and fingers, but that looks like a horse. You measure that in hands. Yeah, it's pretty um, <laughs> <laughs> pretty dark too. If you yeah. Whoa, color. gnarly. Well played, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tom, what was the brewery there again? This is Cricket Hill, Cricket. local in Fairfield, New Jersey, and. The fine print, now that I have my glasses on, tells me it's a Russian Imperial Stout. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. It's gonna well, be, uh, it's with all that, those minutes. hops oils and all the grain in that, that's going to have some amazing head retention. Yeah. You might need to get a spoon to get some of that out of there. <laughs> uh, I, I've poured the rye out. This is a uh, brewery is hop rye uh, that's a uh, beer, a uh, Bear Republic brewery. Mm. And it's called Hop Rod. California. Rye. Nice. In California, nice. right? Yeah, it's a California beer, but I bought it locally, so that counts, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's got this uh, yeah, local it's got somewhere. This, it's got this uh, cloudy kind of brown, uh, a dark brown color to it. I poured yeah. it out like an IPA, very gently into the glass, so that does not to rough it up too much. And you can certainly smell the rye. It says it's eight, the grains were 18% rye uh, when they uh, in the mash. So, what is the alcohol on that? Uh, eight, eight percent. Ooh. Wow. Uh, I probably should have started with something a little easier, but. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's good for ratings. Yeah. Wow, I was expecting a lot. Well, there we go. The hops don't come through right on the on the beginning. The the uh, hoppy notes come through at the end, but. I mean, you can taste the rye. I mean, you can certainly taste uh, that grain in there. But there's a lot of other malts, uh, malted taste in there too. So that's actually that's actually pretty good. Nice, nice. Now, uh, Tom, are you ready to loop back and talk about that um, that foamy stout? Yeah. Well, I've only got small little sips yet, but overwhelmingly um, toasted, um, almost burnt. Not bad burnt, but you know that's very heavy. Yes. Um, that almost flavor. coffee, that uh, dark toast kind of aroma. Yeah, but I mean, you could taste, you could definitely taste like the um, like the edges of your English muffin kind of burnt toast. Oh, that's good. Oh. That's good. Mm. Yeah, it does have the coffee overtones. Very cool. Mm. Very cool. Good stuff. I like my. I like my. Uh, Thicker beers, bigger beers. Yeah. So, Dad, uh, you ready to uh, let's let's go on this Oktoberfest? Okay. All right. This is a uh, Shinerbach Oktoberfest. Uh, really beautiful color to it. Uh, head retention is okay. We poured this pretty much at the top of the show, so we're doing good there. That looks awful red. Is that the lighting uh, in the camera there, or is it that yeah, red? It, it's the it's almost that red, but not as bad. Oh, it's an amber. Yeah, it's a good amber. Okay. All right, so what are you tasting in there, Pops? Well, I'm tasting the the, the, hall, the, the hops, uh, which is a, not a heavy hops beer. Yep. Uh, but, uh, and then uh, uh, the, uh, and the malt uh, gives it a good, solid taste. Yeah, like a, like a good Oktoberfest, there should be plenty of residual sugars in a beer like this, and, and they definitely hit it right on the head. Carbonation level's real good, uh, nice and lively. Uh, it's it's a little bit too much residual malts to call this a sessionable beer, but I could do it without a doubt. It's, it, this is really drinkable. It's good stuff. Take one for the team, Lee. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see who's next. Who haven't we? Who has? All, All right, right uh, James I'm... Card. <clears throat> All right, so I'm drinking the Trequer House Ale, and I should mention that. Uh, does come from Scotland again because this goes back to our uh, what was it Scottish ale show I guess we did yeah <clears throat> and I guess I had the Jacobite uh, ale back then this is like the original nice. uh, before the Jacobites got to it and it says that the last person to pass through them these bear gates were the Bonnie Prince Charlie so we're drinking some stuff of like his it's uh it's pretty good it's nice and dark uh, it doesn't have a lot of head on it. Uh, it smells uh, caramelly a little bit and some dried fruits, so it's tasty. Nice. Now, you were saying Jacobites. Are they related to the Cenobites? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> what? No, but, but actually, the, the place where this was brewed, uh, supposedly Mary, Queen of Scots, slept there. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. 
Cool. So, I don't know. I tried the beer last time. It was pretty good. This one uh, is quite a kick to it. It's got 7.2% alcohol. So, I'm with Matthew. Let's get this on and crack it. It's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's fairly dark on the glass, isn't it? Yeah, it's super dark. And it definitely it has a nice aftertaste to it, but it's not totally clean. So How's how the hops on it? Hmm. I'm not really a hoppy kind of guy, so this is like very light on the hops. I mean, it's got a good enough bite to it, but it, I, I don't know. I'd estimate it's like 30, 30 IBUs maybe, or 85. I don't know, depending on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> throwing some numbers. If it were 85, you'd, it would, you'd know. <laughs> you don't work in yeah, the insurance yeah, I was industry. Right. I, I thought I was right the first way, which is 30. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think it's not too hoppy, but it's it's tasty. So. Right. Excellent. Good stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Uh, Bob, we haven't heard from you yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking um, at this label, and it is Chaka Block. This is the uh, Gypsy Tears Ruby Ale. Beautiful uh, design. I love that artwork. Really beautiful. On that. I really yeah, I, I actually interviewed the brewery today, and they had the same. It's a local artist, uh, East End artist. It's done all their, their artwork. Um, they're very interesting. I actually put a, a link in a, a, about that interview. But uh, what's nice about these guys, they put a ton of information on their, uh, on their label. It's just saying, uh, obviously, 60%, uh, volume 40 IBU, 341 milliliters, and then it goes best served at 5 to 8 degrees uh, Celsius, which uh, for you guys down in the States doesn't mean a lot. But, uh, it, what's you know, that in real people temperature? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That would be... In, that would, I, you in know, real people, it's 8 to 6 degrees Celsius. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get that. Somebody Google that. Uh, no, it, would be, it would be about 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. 45. Fahrenheit. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then it says it's a strong beer, and uh, a return for refund. That's funny. And then uh, on this other side, it gives you the ingredients: uh, Cascadian hops, pale crystal, and victory malts. Nice. So it, yeah. So it's it's nice and hoppy. It's got a nice color. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It looks a little dark because oh, it, I don't have a light going. Let me put a light behind it. That looks almost like tea. Mm. Yeah. Dark tea. Um, yeah, it's 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 a darkish beer. It's got a lot of uh, you know. Look at that head on that sucker. I mean, that's a happy head there. It is. <laughs> Lots going on, and uh, okay, hoppy and very malty. Very, very malty. Almost overruns the, the hop, so you get a, a strong hop at the beginning and then a nice bitter malt at the back. Uh, I'm liking it. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, who hasn't gone yet? Me. All right. <laughs> very enthusiastic. Yeah. Talk to us, friend. All right, so as I said uh, earlier, I'm drinking the Sentinel IPA, and it's from Founders Brewing. And it's 7.2 ABV, and it's got uh, 65 IBUs. Now, what I Where's will say, is it's uh, I think, I think they're in uh, Michigan. I think I could be, yeah, Grand Rapids, uh, yeah. Michigan. Um, you know, I've I've had a few of theirs. I have not had the IPA yet. Well, until tonight, that is. Um, I will say this. The guy on our show, uh, Dustin Green, hates IPAs. I mean with a passion. <laughs> but he loved this. Um, and, you know, right on the nose, it, it's kind of light. Um, there's not a whole lot going on in the aroma. Uh, I get maybe a little bit of malt. Um, I would expect a lot more uh, uh, hop character, um, maybe like some foresty, pine, floral kind of esters. I get none of that. It's, it's mostly just malty. Um, <laughs> and then with the, with the taste, right on the front, it's, I get a little more pine flavor. Um, uh, Dustin would say it tastes like pine cones. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, okay, so where's my beer? Right here. Yeah, so it stays no. a little. It stays on the uh, the malty the malty side. Now on the back end, I will say, that's where all the hot bitterness comes out. Um, but yeah, if if you don't like IPA, you are probably going to like this one. Awesome, yeah. very cool, very cool. Cool. All right, that's, that's uh, a note for you, Lee. Lee is not a big IPA guy. So. Oh, no, yeah, you, you no, I'm like not. That. But um, I, I do got to tell you, James. Um, 
for the first time in my life this week, I actually took the time to track down and try a cask ale. Hmm. And the two of the ones, uh, two beers that I tried, one of them was the Great Divide Titan IPA. And I took an entire page worth of, of tasting notes on it. Um, that beer was probably one of the top five beers I've ever had in my entire life. Nice. Um, I don't know how much of the greatness was due to the casking, uh, but when you took a drink, it was this super rich, super creamy. It was like you'd taken a drink of whole milk with a shot of half and half in it. Wow. It, just, it totally coated the inside of your mouth. It was delicious. Mm. Mm. Uh, and the maltiness was perfectly balanced by this extremely high level of hoppiness. It was a really, really good beer. Yeah, what, you know, um, what was that again? Um, so, so for my dad's benefit, a cask ale uh, is ale that has been served to the bar uh, still in the, at the tail ends of the fermentation process. Uh, they don't carbonate it. They don't put it under CO2. They, they actually have a punch going out of the cask. And this was delicious. It was at Ginger Man's in New York City before I came down here to Texas. So it was mm. really good. Yeah, Next. you know, a lot of those cask ales uh, – are usually better than what you find either on tap or mm -hmm. or in a bottle. Uh, I went to a casking of uh, Cigar City Brewings. They did a vanilla Maduro, and it was just Ooh. amazing. And Sounds then good. It, oh, it was great. And then when That's I awesome. had the the regular uh, Maduro from the bottle, it kind of went all that great. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ruined it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Our local um, our local bar is going to have a Oktoberfest with several different casks. Um, mm. beers. So I'm looking forward to that. I strongly recommend them for the experience. Uh, I had two of them. The first was um, da, 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 hang on. It was Chelsea's Alpha 5 and it was a good beer. There was nothing wrong with it but um, the the other one, the Titan IPA just totally kicked its ass. That was mm -hmm. an amazing beer. Yeah. Without a doubt. I, do. I, do well, have, I, I know uh, people say that uh, Dogfish had this kind of a a thing now, but I have to tell, their 90 minutes is one of my favorites. I just love it. Ninth minutes. A lot of flavor to it. Yeah. Very cool. All right, now, so is you, anybody not giving us? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. For you, well, mine is for you that doesn't have like IPA as much. This is like Do you want some more like I want to be IPA. I <laughs> I got very little smell of hops in it, and I have more malty than hop. It's like you don't get that <laughs> hoppy taste that when you, you know you want to get an IPA, you want to have that hoppy coming up. I don't get much of that. It's more like a hoppier beer, but I don't know. It's, it seems a little is, light for me to be. What's an your preference? What do you prefer? Do you prefer the hop or the malt or what? I prefer the hop. The hoppier, the better. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I mean, it's not a, don't take me wrong, it's not a bad beer, and I have to say, because I'm in a hotel room, I'm drinking in a plastic glass. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to call you out on that, but I decided yeah. not to. So. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's why I was lifting my glass all the time, so waiting for somebody to shame on that. But so. I had no choice. <laughs> it was. I try, I try on the bottle here, but... I well, it, at least taste. tell us you didn't have to peel the plastic wrapper off of the plastic <laughs> cup, right? Uh, uh, just no, it's, like, it's supposed to be a, a beer glass. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Close enough, all right? Yeah, it, it, it's not a bad beer. I wouldn't say, like, <laughs> I probably would drink again. Uh, not something that I would buy to have on my fridge, but it's, it's like a little beer? on the light side. Have, it's hard to see from the top of the glass, but it's kind of an umber. Well, there's not really dry in the end. You get more bitter than dry on the end. It's mm. Okay, but it's not very hoppy beer. It's very light for an IPA, I would say. And I think it was only six. Whoa, six look at the head that sucker. <laughs> Tom, Tom is back with his horse beer again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm actually jealous muscle. of it. I would like to trade with him. Hey, with hey Tom. actually quite good. Tom, hold your hand oh, up right here. Does, do we get a full four fingers on that yeah, head there? No. That's a, that's a four Three, finger. actually, this one. I didn't even pour it fully out. <laughs> Whoa. But uh, wow. check, out the, check out the color. Wow. Whoa. 
That's that a that's a cream right. relay of dark caramel color. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. it's pretty damn Very good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it have any bitter to it, or I found it's a lot of style of bitter. It's a little bit bitter. There's there's the the not the hop aroma, but there's the hop in it that finishes. <laughs> but there's so much malt that um, it manages to balance pretty well. Mm. Well, you know that's that's the key always is. You can go as hoppy or as malty or as bitter or whatever as you want to. As long as it's properly balanced, to me, that's what makes for a drinkable beer. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, everybody's got their own balance opinion too, right? That's true. Of course. That is true. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of this beer called uh, Okanagan Spring Brewmeister Black. We drink it a lot of our podcasts. And uh, it's double What's the show called, dude? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, the Bunker Project. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's yeah, exactly. yeah, you just want to slip that sucker in every now and again. But it's nice. When we uh, had the brewmeister in to interview, he said he double burns the uh, the hops to, mm -hmm. to – or not not the hop. What did he – what did he – the malt. dark, malts, right? You double burnt the malts or something like that So get it so really, it really, really dark, but it's like a lager. So it's a what? super no, no, dark beer. No, no. It's like an eight. Sorry, uh, Bob, was, was he killing his own malts? I guess so. I mean, he he's uh, he does it per, to Bavarian standards. Uh, pretty interesting guy. Uh, he was brought. His father owned the brewery. Then it got bought out by Schliemann's. And uh, so he's the brewmeister for for that division of Schliemann's. Uh, okay. But when he was like sixteen, he moved from Canada. They flew him back to uh, Europe and in Germany. He went to university in a beer university. So it was a, a university that had a de beer division. And that's where he got his uh, brewmeister, uh, I think it was a four-year program. Yeah, and you know, my colleges back. were like that too, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, was <laughs> forms. Row, <laughs> there was live music during class, right? <laughs> uh, but it, you know, he was a classic German. He could drink this stuff like water. And we were interviewing him, <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Amazing, but uh, he, you know, he he said that uh, he loved the beer because it was light, but still had a really really dark um, flavor to it, and that's and you don't really taste the hops because it's it's so you, right. know, you get that beautiful burnt flavor to it. Very very nice mm. beer. Yeah. I, I All right, uh, I'm gonna go dark for just a second. We're gonna go get our second beer. We'll be right back. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Tom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I kind of like that um, that toasted a little bit of burnt flavor anyway, even in my, um, yeah. my food and stuff. I think the chard is good, so I probably oh, go for it. Oh, with a good burnt steak? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, like you know, a, a burnt steak, beer? In french fries, in yeah. cheese, Ham and eggs. in toast, <laughs> in everything. A little you must bit love burnt. camping. <laughs> yes. <'Cause there's> everything's <laughs> frigging burnt in camping. Oh, my God. <laughs> we tried to cook some uh, corn in the, in the fire. We did it with the mm -hmm. husks and the, and the tin foil, and, you know, 20 minutes later, nothing was happening, so we ripped off all the, the, the husks and, and yeah. put it back in. Ten minutes later, they were severely burnt. So, uh, <laughs> well, if it tasted you do it great. Right, corn can caramelize because, I mean, high fructose corn syrup, yep. and it's got a lot of sugars oh, yeah. in it. And when you grill it and caramelize it so that it's got uh, – just that little bit of char. Brown, oh, yeah. Oh. Well, you know the sweet corn they have now, it's it's like almost too sweet. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You guys be surprised, but New Jersey has excellent corn. Hmm. Excellent corn and excellent tomatoes. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hey, we shouldn't be talking about fruits because we get back, we get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. yeah talking about true. salad and I corn. Have a question. I am <laughs> <Yeah>. still listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Busted. I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Okay, I got this one, and I was hoping it would be my savior, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's all right. It's, but I bought all of my. I bought a six pack, and it's the U Pick Six. Mm -hmm. Um, so you pick it off of a shelf. Do you guys know much about? Are those like? I'm starting to think they all had sediment in them, so I'm starting to think that maybe these are the ones that they couldn't sell, and I made a big mistake by. Uh, mm -hmm. taking no. care well, the some brewers beer. choosing not to filter their beers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yep. well, that could. I just. I've stuck with like, uh, like the Russian I IPAs and, uh, or I'm sorry, not the Russian, the Russian stouts and uh, imperial stouts, and uh, this is the first IPA I've ever had that is like ultra murky mm -hmm. and doesn't have like a. 
it doesn't taste. I mean, there's a hop aftertaste, but it's almost all malt, like all the way through. It's cra- It's weird a, to me. What What's that brand? It's a. Uh, it's Oak and Barrel Brewing Company. Uh, let's see. Oh, those oh my guys. lights. Not back. Make it a little bit more, would you? Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm getting seasick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get it. How many beers has Grant had? <laughs> yeah, it tastes, Sorry, it no, it tastes like sugar. It's great. By the way, Matthew, my wife had a crack of the comment you put it on the on the video last week. <laughs> she thought it was funny. Uh, <laughs> is it like a beer libido? <laughs> but Grant, is, is, the, um, is beer libido yeah. like the opposite of beer glasses? <laughs> uh, hey, whatever works, works, dude. That's all I can say. Yeah. Hand in glove, Lee. Hand in glove. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with you, Tom. Probably the beer libido you get at the same time you get the beer glasses. Yeah. So you can really the beer glasses. Yeah. Beer, go- yeah. beer goggles. It's a vicious circle. <laughs> beer goggles, yeah. yeah. Nasty. Hey, Grant, you were talking about the sedimentation, though, in beer. That's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. Oh, right. Okay, well... See it's that last one? This this wheat ale I had. Let's see if I can get it on the camera again. The Upland wheat ale. I it didn't taste like anything till the very last. The last. And then you get the whole mouthful. Mm-hmm. And man, it was horrible. It was like it was, a. Uh, smack I, that's face. my favorite part of the glass. See, I, I like, like to <laughs> shake the wheat beer. The wheat beer you have to shake a little bit on the end just to get that. Oh, okay. And, uh, I mean, glass. you know, wheat beer. That's that's the yeast that set that settles. Okay. Back. They don't fill yeah. it. Yep. I'm not a real big wheat beer guy. I just thought I'd try something new tonight, so I didn't know much about it. I'm a big IPA. That's all right. That's all right. It's uh, you know, it's fun to learn, and the nice yeah. thing is when homework gets assigned. What's not to love, right? <laughs> hey, yeah. they, made, they made me drink Chinese drink. beer last week, so yeah, you <laughs> need it. Maybe upwards from now on. We twisted your arm. It was a hard twist. <laughs> okay, so so from Central Texas for uh, Dad's and my second beer, we're going with Fireman Number Four. This is a blonde ale, and it comes from a real ale brewing company out of Blanco, Texas. Uh, Blanco, you know, you guys are talking about local beers and everything like that. Uh, this is Texas. Blanco would take us most of an hour to get to. Well, uh, Blanco from here. Not that far. Okay, Blanco's it's about in the uh, 50 away. miles north of San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, 50 miles north of San Antonio. It, it's a little bit of a trek, but not too far. Um, this is I a like super... how Blanco and not Blanco. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the girl. Blanco. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but a bing. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, pronunciation down here in Texas. Whole wars have been fought over proper pronunciation. So. Um, and I can guarantee you that whatever wars we might have, uh, you know, locally about pronunciation, we will band up against all the damn Yankees. So, <laughs> and their beer. We got more guns down here. Than the law allows. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the beer. Oh, look at that! That's a beautiful <laughs> color. As long as you have grass-fed beef, I'm always going to vote to improve that. Oh, <laughs> we practically invented grass-fed beef down here. <laughs> so, um, so the beer itself. <laughs> It's a blonde ale, obviously. Uh, very, very pretty. Um, I don't know if that's uh, mist on the outside of the glass. I think this is unfiltered. Uh, I'm not sure. This, uh, Dad and I really like the Shiner Oktoberfest. That was a really solid Oktoberfest. But of both sixes that we picked up the other day, this one's our favorite. We really like this one. Uh, that little uh, brewery over in Blanco is just doing a a, a kick-ass job. There's a nice medium, medium-low hoppiness to it. Uh, Mouthfeel is solid. Uh, this is completely sessionable. I could go through a lot of these beers. Uh, if I had some food to go with it, it'd be perfect. So, so. both of your beers tonight are Oktoberfest. Uh, no, this is the this is a blonde blonde ale. Oh, okay. Sorry. And it's and that's a blonde from Texas. I tried it. I tried yeah. Samuel Adams. Hey, the the I didn't like much. Oh no, the Samuel Adams is terrible. I didn't. I, like <laughs> they're blonde ale or, or they're October. No, they're October. It was. It oh, had a lot of. That, that's one of my favorite Sam Adams beers. Yeah, I like it too. Oh, really? I don't know. I didn't like much. I didn't. I didn't what? like it either. It was. It had a lot of. I don't know. It, it must have been like extra flavoring that I just didn't really like compared to. Of course, I'm. I'm. I'm not an expert or anything. I'm just. I Sorry. tend to like. 
I'm Matthew, waiting. what are you working on there? My second beer tonight is uh, help me with the with the brewery name. Freyock, F R A O C H. Oh, I love Freyoc. that label. Frock. Frock. Fry, if you drink that. enough, it. Yeah. Frock and A. <laughs> Frock and A. This is good. Uh, <laughs> label again. And, and there slur. goes our family rating. Thanks, Matthew. Where's <laughs> 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 Frodo? Uh, Battle Star Classic. Uh, you know, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, show the label again. I love that label. This is uh, totally. this is their Heather Ale, and uh, uh, their website says that they've been making this in the same fashions for 4,000 years, since 2000 BC, and uh, oh, the secret wow. ingredient, there's a secret ingredient, which is pretty obviously Heather, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heather Ale, but uh, it's actually, uh, uh, it pours out a light, uh, a oh, light nice. color here, and light amber. It's... Pretty well filtered, but uh, a, a little bit of sediment in there kind of makes it uh, the opacity a little bit darker. But I I roughed it up. Uh, I poured it hard into the glass, and I got no head on it whatsoever. So there's wow. no head right. to it. But uh, yeah. it, it, really? it looks really? like it hits the mouth like, and you can taste uh, <laughs> the heather, and you can you can taste that kind of stuff in there. So oh. um, it's a it's an above average ale, I would say. Now, <laughs> you were talking about, they were saying they've brewed that for 4,000 years. Uh, hops are actually a fairly recent addition to the yeah. brewer's arsenal. Yeah. Uh, prior to using hops in brewing, uh, he uh, heathers, junipers, um, any anything that had a similar flavor, uh, mankind's recognized for a long, <laughs> long time that that sort of semi-bitter, semi-sweet flavor accentuates the malt and the beer really, really well. Right. Now, one of the differences with all of that other stuff, uh, hops has a preservative quality, quality for the beer that all that other stuff was missing out on. Mm. So that's why hops overtook all those other additives in beer so yeah. hard. What about bitterness? Uh, there's no, no, the bitterness is an after effect. It's pres preservation yeah. was the main reason. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Um, so, Professor, go with it. Uh, talk to us about the preservation. Well, how did that change the beer? Yeah, well, you could drink it longer because don't forget that this was, you know, when beer came to the fore, beer was the main, it was life. Water wasn't life. Beer was life. Beer was yeah. liquid bread and uh, well, it, it was, was considered so, it was much safer. Water. Yeah. Safer than the water supplies. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the... Hops is the addition of hops. Was that Europe, I believe, Northern Europe, where that started? I believe you're right. You could look it up and find out. But um, yeah, that um, that allowed the beer to stay longer and to. Um, well, you did talk about crowd. like uh, how some monks uh, have very heavy beers so they could drink during their fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yep. I think I heard this on the hangout a few weeks back. Uh, do what was about the hop about the monks. Um, a, a lot of the Trappist ales, the tradition comes from the monks brewing an extremely rich, extremely high gravity, high calorie beer, mm -hmm. so that during their fasting days they could get drunk instead and not be hungry. So yeah. that was a big excuse. Oh, hey, you're drinking you know water. You really? <laughs> yeah. it's for, it's yeah, for know, medical guys, purposes. We would drink the water, but the last guy that drank the water died yesterday. So I'm yeah. gonna stick with the beer. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's the tr truth. I've been fasting since like 1992. <laughs> <laughs> it shows, Matthew. It shows. Yeah. Oh, it it's felt. Hey, my favorite line is: I, I had a barley burger for lunch. <laughs> That's a t-shirt saying. You could be using that on a t-shirt. I like it. Good. All right. So we did Matt's beer? We um, did. So who's up for second beer? Uh, James, James Carr? I've got, I got one. So uh, you know how I'm such a fan of IPAs. I decided to take one for the team because Gil said he hated <laughs> Japanese beers. No, 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 no. I said I, I hate the, the Chinese. I like the, the I like Kirin okay. I didn't like the Chinese one. Okay. The is pretty good. All right. So I'm going to try the Hopperazzi. It's a double Pilsner slash Imperial Pale Ale. Yeah, it's right. very hoppy. Uh, you guys all found some beers. It's so. such a nice, cool label. Yeah. Well, this is from the same set. set so. I yeah, this got those scrappy good. looking beers. Uh, Bob, label. So let's go here. All right. And if I look like I really hate it, it's probably because I do. Um, <laughs> it's not bad. All right. No, I'm sure it's not, but I'm not usually the kind of guy that likes a lot of hops in his beer. So um, <laughs> oh, it's got a. You'll hate it. Nice golden color yeah, to it. <laughs> oh man, it smells very hoppy. It's, so, it's, um, I'm drinking it right now too. 
I wish there was smell computers already. And here goes his face. Actually, that's not bad. <laughs> Make your hot face, <laughs> well, I mean, it could have been because I drank a 7.2% uh, really heavy ale before <laughs> and it muted the hops of this. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, James, most so people hoppy. go the other way. They start with the weaker beers and work up. Yeah. Maybe, if, maybe if one of your beers you know you're going to hate, that's the direction you should go. <laughs> <laughs> and actually... Actually, James, if you your third beer, don't trust your review of it because your taste buds will be so far shot. Mm -hmm. from that one <laughs> that you won't, you won't really yeah. evaluate it. Well, We're all I about can actually. Good show the guys. only way to make worse is using plastic glass. <laughs> <laughs> is it, yeah. so, so this tastes very piney when you first take a drink of it, but then it has a very nice citrus aftertaste at the end of it. So, I could actually probably drink this and not really care too much. Uh, it's not too overpowering for me. A so. little bitter. It, it it's not very bitter. I mean, maybe you get a little bit of a punch in the face, but it's good. So just a Wait, little, that's all. a little it bit. It a good of punch, a punch in the face. Slap. Yeah. yeah, it's like the a way, slap, not a punch. The way James <laughs> talks, it seems to me that he can drink anything. Yeah, that's <laughs> all dry hopping, right, Lee? Yeah, yeah from so, Alberta, we can drink anything. So, <laughs> so generally speaking, the the bitter aftertaste comes from hops that go in at the boil uh, earlier on in the boil. Mm -hmm. The longer the uh, the cohogamines, the, the the hop acids sit in that boiling water, uh, most of them tend the aromatics tend to, to vaporize and boil off. So you're just left with a bitter flavor. Uh, if you pick up a hoppy beer and you're getting a really green grassy hoppy aroma in the nose up front as it comes to your face, that's usually the result of hops that are added at the very end of the boil. Mm -hmm. Or the beer has been dry hopped and or hopped in the fermentation tank. One of those. Wow. Okay. And most most well, IPAs well, are them. dry hopped. Say that again, ah. Jay? Most American. Yeah, most American uh, IPAs are dry hopped. Uh, right. As a matter of fact, they did... Um, the British started dry hopping back in the 19th century. Um, after Bow Brewery, uh, they used to ship to, to India through the... Um, East India Company, which was uh, Britain's trading company with India, uh, after they failed, a lot of these uh, towns from uh, Burton um, started dry hopping their ales, not only because it preserved the beer, but they also started to develop that, that taste for the really hoppy beer. So right. that kind of mm -hmm. just moved over to America. See, I know some stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Professor. <laughs> so um, is it true... Now, with, I'm, I smoke cigars, too, so... Uh, between cigars, you always eat a piece of dark chocolate. Now, if you did that between beers, would that uh, filter the taste out? Because dark chocolate is supposed to cleanse the palate. It certainly wouldn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. uh, coffee. Okay. You're, so, you're supposed to, to, to bite on a coffee grain, I guess. Yeah. You, you yeah, smell well, bacon that chocolate. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. Eat a okay. piece of bacon. <laughs> yeah. Pizza <laughs> is nice. I uh, like a pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Go, 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 to, a, go to a smorgasbord restaurant. And Clear the ballot with another beer. Yeah, a big chunk of steak works really well for me, too. <laughs> another steak. Okay, so if, you're watching, if you're watching this, all of that advice, take that at your own, you know. <laughs> yeah. Only if you're in Canada. Oh my. Uh, I'll have a bear steak and cleansing the palate. What most people use is some sort of like a bread, a cracker, or something. What you want is like a physical action in there to to get most of that stuff down. If you're okay. going with a cheese or something that's going to coat the inside of your mouth, that'll hold the previous flavors there. So okay, so which okay. which beer would you drink with cheese? Oh, all of them. Uh, there's so so. If you take a look at any classic uh, beer slash food pairings, beer um, categorically gets paired with uh, desserts, main meals, and cheese, and that's the way most people break it down. And depending upon which one of those foods you have, uh, you generally tend to go strength versus strength. If you've got a very very light, uh, airy, say a dessert. You want to pair a light beer to go with it. You, you match them strength for strength. On the other hand, with a cheese, something real innocuous like a Swiss, which doesn't have a super strong flavor, uh, wheats would go really well with a Swiss. Uh, um, let's see, what else? Uh, pale ales would probably be fairly well paired. On the other hand, if you're going to step up to something like a Stilton or a Brie, 
a really aggressive in your face cheese, you're pretty much required to break out an IPA to go with it. Mm -hmm. Are you saying key lime pie and imperial stout really don't go together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your own, okay? Yeah. You know, okay, so so if you had to ask me, and I'm just I gotta admit, I'm just starting to study food and beer pairings. But honestly, Matthew, if you said key lime pie, I would reach for uh, lambic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would. I absolutely would. You know, I just want to say you something. You don't die from sugar high first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just want to go on record in saying that, you know, we're trying to abbreviate the show a little bit because we kind of lose our viewers in an hour and a half. <laughs> well, that's their problem. James Gass does it right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 25 minute show and cut it off no matter who's talking. But uh, trying to get three beers in 25 minutes, I'm a lightweight here. I mean, you know, Matt, it's all in the post editing. You've actually got to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Big production team. <laughs> yeah. There's actually 30 people on this hangout. It's the, the <laughs> so we, 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 we do have a question from the from the people watching. One of them says, uh, "Does anybody have any suggestions for South Florida for real beer?" So, Ooh. Uh, anything from Cigar City? Uh, they're down in Tampa. Also, uh, Terrapin, which is my second beer. Uh, yeah, there you go. They're from Athens. They just uh, expanded their distribution down to Orlando and. Uh, Jacksonville, I believe. Uh, no, they went down to Tampa. Yeah, they, they expanded to Orlando and Tampa. So if you're down there, you can get um, Cigar City or Terrapin. Both of those are, are really great breweries. Outstanding. Excellent. Thanks for the recommendation. And that's right a shout out to Patricia, who's watching us. <laughs> Hello. All right, Susan. So Hello. Does, does anybody have a second beer review that they haven't gotten to yet? Uh, James Gass, I don't think we've heard yours. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm drinking Terrapin uh, Hops Executioner, uh, and I hope you guys. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Is it is it just me or is it a trend? If you brew an IPA, you have to give it a super testosterone laden name. <laughs> exactly. Look, you Big know, macho you, beer. You, you need a badass yeah. label for a badass beer. Did you guys hear beer. that? <laughs> what is that? What do you call that beer, Dave? Uh, Tom? This is the Delirium Tremens. Uh, well, hang on. Uh, James was going through his review. Sorry. Let's jump on it. Yeah. Let's get his first. That's um, a sexy looking bottle, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the Delirium, they, they make some really good stuff. Um, so the Terrapin Hop Secutioner, it's an IPA from uh, Terrapin Beer Company, which is located in Athens, Georgia. Um, it's a, it's a, you know, this is a kick, kick you in the teeth kind of IPA. It's uh, extremely hoppy. I mean, right on the nose, you get hops, you get the the pine forest, you get the floral uh, floral esters, um, and then on the taste, it's got a nice medium body to it. Uh, it's it's a little thick in the mouth. Ah, that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> One more beer for that, Jim. <laughs> uh, and you know, it 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 poured when it was cold. It poured a. a, a I guess they have that. Uh, some beers have that cold haze when you pour them. It's real hazy, and as they warm up, that haze sort of goes away. And this one's been sitting here for a while. Um, and sometimes, you know, I like to drink my beers warm. I uh, like the British do. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> what about, uh, Who makes that? Uh, it is Terrapin Beer Company, and they are out of Athens, Georgia. Um, Southern beer. Yeah, buddy. Southern beer. Um, yeah, you know, and then right on the front, you get all that hops, and you get you get the pine, and you get the the nice floral, good stuff. And then on the back end, it just quickly fades away. There's not. A real mm -hmm. nasty, bitty, bitter aftertaste. The seventy-eight IBUs don't stay with you. No, they don't actually. Wow. I mean, it's, it's just a real quick fade. Yeah. Um, now on the front end, I will say it is it it's pretty bitter. Uh, but yeah, on the back end, it's not that bad, and it's uh, seven point three ABV. And when I drink an IPA, I, I like them big. Um, if if it's if it's less than a six, I'm not going to drink it because it's just a it's a weak IPA. Mm. Um, big and dusty. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you guys can find this uh, up north or over in Cali, I suggest you guys uh, go pick it up. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, can, can I just jump here for a second? I, 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 no. Okay. Um, so, no, yeah. just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say I interviewed this, this lady who's down in California, and she's got a beer.
up. Have you guys ever run into that? She's got uh, 2,500 uh, breweries on it. And, wow. Uh, yeah, and it's it's not a Google map. What's the other big map company Google that was there? Google Maps. Pardon? MapQuest or MapsCo? Map, MapQuest, yeah. So it's it's Quest. called it's called Beer Quest. So if you uh, Google Beer oh. Quest. And uh, she's a very interesting lady. She does forensic um, photography and uh, mapping and uh, for, for the San Francisco police or the LA police. And what she goes rides around on her bike and checks out different types of beers. And she's been doing this for uh, about four years now. So it's a pretty awesome list. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, so if you send in uh, recommendations, she will put that brewery on her map. All right. Uh, let's see, Tom, you had a uh, Delirium Trimmins to get to. Yeah, right now, sir. yeah. Belgian family brewery, Delirium Trimmins on that. Nice. Probably should have had this first, but it was the one I was looking forward to, so I wanted to make it last. Beautiful, clear. Well, I mean, it's slightly cloudy. Um, strong ale, eight and a half percent alcohol. Wow, my God, though so it doesn't uh, doesn't taste like it at all. I guess I know why do you do this show on Friday then. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a reason yeah, it's not a Wednesday show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good. Is that Tom? Is that bottle? Is that like a? I got like a, a laminate on it, or is it a clouded glass? No, that's. Let's see what what they. Uh, that's like the plastic, isn't it? You can see the top, so it looks like it is, but. Uh, uh, it's got a label on it then. Uh, I can't find the seam to get the label off. It's one of those shrink wrap labels. Yeah, yeah shrink wrap the whole be, bottle. But I can't actually find the seam. Yeah, don't turn it upside down to check. I don't yeah. think it has a team. I think <laughs> just pop it, it in. Is cork. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. I had to pop the cork. Nice. 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 On there. Actually, it's not It's not seamed. It's painted. Hmm. Oh. You Very can see nice. that right now. It's dipped in something, so that's paint. Aren't those, uh, aren't those clay bottles? It's not actually clay. It's actually the brown glass on the inside, but it's dipped in some sort of paint to look like clay. Well, huh. it, it is actually it is actually a, a screen like a, they they dip like they do this on uh, like tank like bike tanks and stuff like this. It's yeah. a water screen and when you roll it, it just fills in and it's a process that you do. It's pretty cool actually. Neat. Yeah, it looks like paint on the outside. As opposed, it looks like it's a regular glass bottle with some sort of coating on it. Well, it's good us to talk about it for five minutes now, so it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the beer sucks, but the bottle's nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So you like the beer, not? Yeah, yeah. I like the beer. Kind of yeah. wish I had this first. I wasn't realizing I was going to have an imperial stout, but uh, mm. yeah, it's quite good. What are we down to? Are we down to Gil here on your second beer? Oh no, I don't have a second beer. I'm a uh, I'm away from home. I just got a six pack. I can be buying beer yeah. while I'm in a hotel. That's uh. awesome. Sorry about that. I had to plug in a camera before, uh, or plug in a, a cable before the laptop died. Uh, Dad had a question about the delirium trimmings. Dad, does uh, was that like a champagne cork that I saw? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it actually popped like that because it was very, um, it's pretty carbonated. It almost <laughs> took Tom's eye off. But the carbonation is not in the glass, so it's there. There are still bubbles coming up on it. It's hard to see. I'm not sure if you guys can get that. Hmm. Very little That's lacing and very little hay. Yeah. Was well, it hoppy at all? Or what's it like? The the last time I had the delirium trimmings, uh, the hops level were pretty low. Was pretty low on it, mm. uh, but it had just a a, a highly uh, al alcoholic kind of back into it. The, it played in really well with the maltiness. Yeah, the um, the hops that are in this are definitely in the brew in the boil. In the um, as opposed to the smell because you don't actually get it in the smell. Here's a fresh pour for my wife. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's a, that's a healthy pour. You're all yep. about big yeah. head tonight, Tom. Yeah, uh, he's a head. What are you doing? Swallowing head today. Karen in the background. I don't know if she comes. You can see yeah, part yeah, of now, don't you feel awkward, Matthew? Yeah. Just <laughs> no. I, I did for a second, yeah. but it passed. He's, he's okay. evil plotted. <laughs> 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 uh, Oh. All right, uh, we're getting to the top of the hour, so we've got two more pieces of business we need to take care of. First and foremost, does uh, anybody have a second beer review that we haven't hit? And then our second piece is, what are we drinking next weekend? Okay, I got I'm one here. here. Okay, so I've got two reviews we need to hit. Uh, let's. 
everybody be thinking about next weekend. Let's uh, start with uh, James Card. No, 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 no. I said I won't be here next week, so I don't get. Oh, then hush. Then hush. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. It's a good reason. It's a good reason. <laughs> it's my birthday weekend next weekend. Woo! Uh, yeah. 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 Totally toasted. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Bob, I think I heard you say you okay, have a yeah. to take care of. Okay, yeah, so I got this one. I had one earlier today. Hmm. It's, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Did James had that last week? And I just wanted to pour it. Yeah, let me see. Let's get a pour going the here. Old boy English, old English ale. A refined pint for a refined gentleman. I, so it's a, it's a nice darkish beer. It's, good. it's a good family one. It gets a 91. It was more when I was in the mood for after the workout. I wasn't really into the stout. Yeah. Um, you know what? No hops. That'd be an imperial stout. It's, uh, wow. Caramel? You didn't see. What kind of beer is that? Okay. This is called Old Boy, and it's called a Classic Ale. It's, it's the oh. same guys from the Parallel 49. Nice. Um, zero this, hops, this really. Uh, it's uh, very, very caramelly. And um, it's kind of got a light, light flavor to it. Yeah, it's it's almost like a sweet beer. <laughs> Very really? nice. Yeah, it's uh, you know I usually do really dark beers, but this this is uh, my mouth is like coated with this sweetness. It'd be amazing with corn or something like that. Hmm. Very nice. Very you know it it's got a good color to it. I don't know if you can see it here because <laughs> uh, my background color. Hang on, let me grab. No, it looks nice and clear, it's but uh, same time yeah, it's, it's super nice clear. Dark. Yeah, but it's 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 a pretty pretty nice. darkish yeah, beer. Yeah. Robust. Yeah. Uh, but you know, surprisingly no hops. It's mm. very malty. Very, very malty. Super malty. Super malty. Yeah. Uh what did they say here? This is between four and seven degrees Celsius. Um <laughs> it's a five percent uh thirty seven IBU. And the hops is uh, it's got pale crystal and chocolate malts. Ah, yeah, and uh, Wallmeat, yeah. uh, Wallamite hops, Wallamite hops. Wallamite. Thank you. That's so, uh, the only reason I know that, uh, Eric is McKee isn't here tonight, but I spent a year out in Portland, and he tutored me in all the damn phraseology out there. <laughs> the only way I can remember Willamette is, it's Willamette, damn it. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, it Down sure here is. in the south, we say okay. Willamette. <laughs> no. uh, but that's a smooth beer you know that you could uh, you could suddenly be having two or three of those behind uh, and say what happened so yeah Jesus yeah, yeah well I'm on beer four to. now guys okay, okay uh, so we need to come up with a topic for next weekend anybody have any suggestions do you want a Japanese beer well, I do have to last week because because we need to get around to these. We need to start thinking about pumpkins and fall yeah, festival and that things good. like that. So yeah, that's my suggestion, good. and and my suggestion is based on they're already on the shelves. We may as well review them while they're still fresh from the brewery before they've sat for a month, two months. Okay. If if I can jump in here, um, go for it. On the 28th, um, Southern Beer Review is planning on doing our Oktoberfest, and if you guys want to do Oktoberfest then, uh, we could sort of advertise that as, you know, uh, Beer Friday Oktoberfest on September the 28th. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm in. Because it, it's, it's, I second that. You know, we, <laughs> Yeah, you know, we shoot on Fridays, and Oktoberfest starts the uh, Saturday before that. Um, so <laughs> the next Friday, October. that would sort of the natural. Yeah, every day is Oktoberfest. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if you guys on the 28th want to do Oktoberfest, and then the following Friday after that, October the 5th, we're going to do pumpkin ales. And I think it might be kind of cool to sort of fall in line um, with that. Um, I so think next you week, separate the pumpkins in October and stuff. Say that again, pumpkin, Tom. Pumpkin, that'll be challenging. I think you should <laughs> separate the pumpkins and the Oktoberfests, though, because there's, there's by, so like, many by like a week or something like that. Yeah. 
And I think we should have way cooler beers than the Southern Beer Review. That's just me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm well, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, James, as long as you're here, we'll have way cooler T-shirts, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So then let's let's go, let's try something next week. Like, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of red ales. Is that, oh, is, yeah. Is that broad enough that we could find red ales? Yeah. Yeah, I drank one tonight. Yeah? I just had one tonight. It was... Yeah, here she is. Yeah. That's about as red as you can get. She's pretty hot. All right. <laughs> uh, so we have one vote for uh, for reds, uh, Irish reds, red ales. We talked about going back into porters at some point in the fall season, too. Ooh, porters. Is it, yeah, got like, is it too cold for, like, the porters or a... Never. Never. <laughs> I mean, it's too warm, I should say. Not too cold. No, yeah. Not where I'm going to be back in New York. If I lived here in Texas, I might vote against it. But you know. <laughs> so Lee, if Probably. we hold off for the 28th and then October for the pumpkin and the um, Oktoberfest, we're still going to have one more weekend. We need to fill up with something. Well, have you ever got, thought about doing the Guinness show where everybody's drinking Guinness and talking about Guinness? Not unless I'm from Ireland. Uh, <laughs> it is, yeah. it is yeah. a world of difference between what yeah. you get in the pub in Ireland and here. It's oh, absolutely. So, so the, the general consensus within within our crew, Bob, is, yeah, the Guinness you get over here is a really good beer. There's nothing wrong with it. But once we become rock stars, we're going to pay for a big tour for all of us to go over there and drink it at the brewery. Mm. I don't know when that's going to happen, but you know, <laughs> we're waiting for Tom to start monetizing the whole thing. I don't know what the <laughs> way <laughs> is. Before we go to the Jameson's thing. Uh, we'll do, so we'll do Irish uh, beer on one day and Jameson's on the next day. Or, or whiskey. Hey. Would would it be okay to do like what what are those called uh, where you have a beer in a whiskey shop? What's that called? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a killer collection of whiskey, and I'm I'm oh, desperately yeah, whiskey, trying to get rid of it. Whiskey bourbon mm. beer, that is nice. I love this. You know, like what's a good beer that goes with a shot of whiskey? Uh, it's oh, called uh, Boiler Maker. Boiler Maker. Boiler yeah. Maker. Wow. So we could have a Boiler Maker yeah. show. Yeah. Thanks, you, Brad. You want to take any beer you want? I don't care. Mm -hmm. Take a beer. With a shot at the uh, Quevero 1800 uh, tequila. Yeah. Uh, pour the two of them together, and you got a party. You don't need anybody else. <laughs> <in. laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not denying you that one. <laughs> okay, Carol. Yeah, when I was in Germany, they used, they used to, to get like this very tall glass of beer, and they would take a shot glass of uh, cognac or and just drop into a, what they call the submarine in Germany. Oh, and okay. to drink the beer that. Bourbon just keep mixing it. Oh, See, that's, awesome. that's interesting. That's called a submarine here in the states. It's a boiler maker. Yeah, oh, boiler exactly. maker. Because that's where you end up waking up. Yeah. Right, <laughs> and the yeah. boiler maker on the submarine. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Tom, uh, correct me. Did we c come up with a style for next week? Well, yeah, I thought we. Um, what were we doing? Not the Irish beer, but the uh, red ale. What red, ales. red beer? Matt said. Red ales, yeah. We just have another weekend to fill up before um, Oktoberfest. Well, we can figure that out next week. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, no, red, so red, red ale. ale. We could decide later. Okay. I'm into red ale. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, next week we're going to be doing red ales. Then uh, we're going to go uh, join hip to hip with the Southern Bear Review uh, for the last weekend in uh, September and the first weekend in October, I believe it was. October. Or, uh, let's see, the Oktoberfest the first, and then the Pumpkins the next oh. week. Uh, guys here on the Friday Night Craft Beer Hangout, we've got one more weekend we've got to cover. We'll deal with that next week. Yep. Uh, until then, from Central Texas, Lee Allison, my dad Carol's with me tonight. Hey. Thank you hey. guys for attending, everybody, and uh, excellent show. I had an awful lot of fun. For all of those of you that are in the Hangout, hang around for the after party. Uh, for everybody else, we'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.